This video will cover how to replace the inlet and discharge valves along with the pistons, seals, and guides on an RTX 30.500N pump. These are the tools used in the video to repair the machine. Here are the kits and their part numbers needed to service the pump. To replace the three discharge valves on the top of this pump, start by removing the valve caps on the manifold with a 24mm socket. Next, using a pair of needle nose or valve pliers, remove the valves by grabbing the plastic valve cage while twisting and pulling straight out. Make sure to clean the thread sealer off of the plugs and the ports for your valves to prevent damage when reassembling it. Put in the new valves and make sure they are properly seated. It's okay to use something that you have a firm grip on and that will not damage the inside of your pump to make sure they are in all the way. Make sure the backup ring is correctly fitted into the groove of your valve cap to prevent damaging it when putting the caps back on. Apply a thin layer of thread sealer all the way around the threads when reinstalling the valve caps. Make sure to torque the caps to 531 inch-pounds, or 44 foot-pounds, before the adhesive dries. Never use an air gun when reassembling your machine. This can lead to injury to you or damage to your pump. To access the inlet valves, pistons, seals, and their guides, start by removing the 12 head bolts with a 6mm Allen socket. Taking off these bolts will allow you to remove the inlet manifold. Watch out for this small o-ring that could fall out during servicing. Without it, your pump will end up leaking. To remove the valves, start by taking off the o-rings near the valve. Be cautious not to pierce your o-rings, or they will have to be replaced. Now. You can take a pair of valve players to twist and pull the valve straight out. If you are not replacing your valves, check the springs on them to make sure they are functioning properly. After that, then you can put the valves back into place, followed by the o-rings. To access the other components in the head, remove the eight other manifold bolts with an 8mm Allen socket. To take off the head, rotate the crankshaft with a wrench to help push it off of the pistons. This allows enough space to evenly pry off the head with two screwdrivers on opposite sides of the pump. After that, support the bottom of the head and push off with your thumbs. Be careful not to apply too much pressure to one side of the head, because this can crack the ceramic pistons. Once the manifold is off, there will be parts either still on the pistons or in the head of the pump. To remove parts still on the pistons, start by using a wrench or your hand to rotate the crankshaft. This will push the parts towards the end of the pistons, making them easier to twist off. Do not remove or loosen these. They are machining ports. 
To take the rear piston guides and low pressure seals out of the head, the best method is to use a pair of channel lock pliers to twist and pull them off. Next, take out the front piston guide. If the high pressure seals can't be taken out by hand, use a small flathead screwdriver to pry them out without scratching the inside of the pump. The first item to go under the manifold will be the head ring with the flat side facing down. Next comes the high pressure seal. Its concave side should fit over the support ring. New seals are very tough to fit in. Make sure you work them in at an angle and to only use your hands. The brown backup ring should then fit on top of that. The front piston guide comes next, with its smaller side going into the head. To put the rear piston guide in, first replace the O-ring on the outside. Then place the brown backup ring into it. The low pressure seal goes on top of that, with its concave side sticking out of the guide. The small support ring will fit into the seal with its curved side down. Make sure you put a small amount of grease onto the ring so that it stays into the seal when you put the guide back into the head. The guide should click into place when seated squarely. If you are not putting on new pistons, you can use a knife to remove debris on the piston. Scrubbing and wiping them off is also important to do. To take off the pistons, remove the piston bolt using a 13mm socket. Take off the brass plate in any fashion that does not end up bending it out of shape. Again, make sure to clean off any thread sealant from the bolts before putting them back in. Once everything has been cleaned or replaced, start by putting the brass plate back on. The piston will come next. There is a small o-ring hidden in the piston bolt. Make sure to inspect this to ensure it hasn't been damaged. Apply a small amount of thread locker all the way around the bottom of the piston bolt before retightening them. Torque the piston bolts to 177 inch-pounds. To properly put on the manifold, Turn the crankshaft so that the outer pistons are even. This helps with pushing the head back on squarely. New seals may be tight, so you can use a soft faced hammer to evenly tap it into place while supporting the head. These head bolts should be torqued to 442 inch-pounds, or 37 foot-pounds. Torquing in a crisscross manner can help evenly tighten the head onto the pump. Don't accidentally install the inlet manifold on upside down. The words in should be the right way up when put on right. The inlet head bolts can be torqued to 177 inch pounds.